Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Calls for answers this morning as the Justice Department says they are now looking into the law enforcement response of what happened in Uvalde, particularly why the shooter was not stopped earlier. Now this comes as the community comes together to try to heal. I've seen firsthand the pain of the families. At the church, we've given away food, we've, we've done uh, several activities for the, for the families, and we see the pain that they're going through. So to us, as a community, it's important to join them because we're all Uvalde in this moment. Now community coming together after unspeakable hurt. We have team coverage from Uvalde. Good morning, it is Monday, May 30th. It is Memorial Day. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. You know, it's not just about barbecuing and having the day off like most people do. It's about honoring and remembering those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, fighting and protecting our country. And I, Mike, you know, I know it's probably a lot of people will be outside. Mm -hmm. uh, it's and it's going to be a pretty hot one. Oh yeah, it's going to be very, very hot. Just a continuation, basically, of the weekend. We're going to be near a record uh, later on today. So uh, if you are out, paying your respects at uh, some of the local over to San, uh, over at uh, Fort Sam National Cemetery, perhaps, or out with family and friends, do take it easy. Lots of water, sunscreen, shade as much as possible. We've got lots of clouds hanging around here this morning. This is the the usual cycle. That that we go through. We had it over the weekend, morning clouds, then afternoon sunshine. It is really, really hot out there. Mid and upper 70s throughout much of the area. 79 right now in Castroville. A ton of humidity. So yes, even at this hour, we've got somewhat of a heat index to deal with. Feels like 80 out there at the airport. Same thing at Stinson. 82 is the heat index right now in Pleasanton. So add about 20, or, yeah, 20, 22, 23 degrees or so, depending on where you are to those numbers. That's what it's going to feel like later on this afternoon. Molds on the moderate side, grass, pine, pigweed are all low. And of course, throughout the day, it is going to be a anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees or more above your respective normal. Normal high here in town is 90. We're going to be up to 97 degrees. Lots of sunshine. It is also going to be breezy. Any break from the heat in sight? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. President Biden had an emotional visit to Uvalde amid major developments in the investigation. The Justice Department now saying they are looking into the law enforcement response, in particular, why the shooter was not stopped sooner. ABC's Marcus Moore takes a closer look. President Biden confronted with a community's mounting frustration in Uvalde, Texas. President responding, we will. And tonight, ABC News obtaining new video showing police breaking windows at the school. They're getting the kids out. Officers trying to rescue students from the building. And for the first time, we hear what appears to be dispatch audio sharing with officers that 911 operators are on the phone with students trapped inside those classrooms. Texas law enforcement detailing those chilling calls from children. She identified herself and whispered she's in room 112. At 1210, she called back in room 12, advised there are multiple dead. Again at 1216, she's called back and said there's eight to nine students alive. Tonight, the Justice Department announcing it will conduct a review of the law enforcement response to the shooting, vowing it will be fair, transparent, and independent. Sources telling ABC News that a Customs and Border Protection tactical team defied local authorities, led by Police Chief Pete Arredondo. He was convinced at the time that the, there was no more threat to the children and that the subject was barricaded and that they had time to organize with the proper equipment to go in. That federal tactical team going in at 12.50 p.m., fatally shooting the suspect 77 minutes after the terror began. The gunman found with more than a dozen bullet wounds. And that was ABC's Marcus Moore reporting. Now we're obviously going to be following this investigation very closely on air and online. Also look for the latest on Good Morning America starting at 7 a.m. Now, President Joe Biden, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, spent yesterday in Uvalde offering condolences, speaking to victims' families and the entire community 
affected by that massacre at Robb Elementary. Our Lee Waldman spoke with people along the president's route about what his visit meant to their community. As the president and first lady arrived here in Uvalde, their first stop was here at Robb Elementary School. Dr. Jill Biden taking the time to touch photos of each of the children and teachers killed in Tuesday's shooting. They met with the CISD superintendent and elementary school principal. Next, they made their way to Sacred Heart Catholic Church to take part in an hour-long mass, worshiping with the community as they prayed for healing. The presidential visit wrapping up at Garner Field Airport, where the Biden spoke with first responders. President Biden tweeting this before taking off, quote, we're committed to turning this pain into action, unquote. We know funerals for the 21 victims are starting this week. People living in this community ask for continued prayers as they progress forward. In Uvalde, Lee Waldman, GMSA. Well, now to a phrase we are often hearing, Uvalde strong. Our Alicia Barrera speaking to so many in the Uvalde community yesterday. She takes a look at what those families are now doing to try to heal. Good morning. Well, we spoke to a lot of people who live here, but also those who have traveled hundreds, if not thousands of miles. And they say that this town square has always been the heart of Uvalde. So it just made sense to have the memorial here. 21 wooden crosses lead the way to a space of healing in Uvalde's town square. I had to be here just to show support and uh, maybe start my own healing. This is what Uvalde Strong looks like. Messages by children, their own words, their own writing. We're here for everybody and that's how I was raised. I just know that it would hurt me the most to lose my sister in a situation like this. Um, so I stay close with God and I stay close with my family. Each person present connecting to the victims in some way, hoping to be a pillar of support for the families of the lives lost and the children of Robb Elementary. Now families are numb, but I think in time they'll see all the support that they had when this happened and even afterwards. I've told kids before that there's this giant hole in their heart and uh, it'll never close, but it will get smaller in time. And that takes talking about it, crying about it, having those tears. But it's the gathering and community and those acts of kindness that we've witnessed throughout these last few days that the people here in Uvalde believe will help mend that broken heart. Reporting in Uvalde for GMSA, Alicia Barrera. And we've been covering the aftermath of the Uvalde school massacre closely to see any of our stories, including our past stories about the shooting timeline, or the victims and their backgrounds, just head to ksat.com. You can find these stories on our homepage. And still in the aftermath, almost a week later, people are still asking the question, how can I help out? And also, what happened? That's why this weekend on Leading SA, we were joined by the COO of the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center and Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Now we talked about what blood donations mean, how they can be used not only to help the community, but in emergency situations like this. And we went over local law enforcement from Uvalde's response with the sheriff, Javier Salazar. He touched on what he would have done, what the procedures are in place here locally. You can watch both of those interviews right now. Just head to ksat.com. Time now, 438, 77 degrees out. Well, new details out of Nepal after the break, what we're learning about a deadly plane crash. And let's take a quick live look out at the roadways. It is super early this Memorial Day Monday. Not too many people out and about, but Stephen Cavazos is in the building. He's going to join us in a little bit for your full roadway forecast. Yeah, we'll call it a, yeah. a road forecast. One forecast to another, 77 <laughs> degrees. Oh my gosh, it's 77, so early in the morning. It's humid, yucky out there, and I'm sure it's going to be another hot one. Mike will have our Memorial Day forecast when we come back. Welcome back in your morning headlines. Search and rescue teams in Nepal recovering the bodies of 16 people on board a Terra air flight. It crashed with 22 people on board. Nepal's Civil Aviation Authority said on Twitter that the bodies have been collected. They have yet to be identified. Now, the wreckage of the plane that crashed into Nepal's mountains has been found. Now, those bodies recovered, but the Terra air turboprop they lost contact with the airport tower yesterday while flying through an area of high mountaintops. The plane's destination is popular with foreign hikers who track the mountain trails with Indian and Nepal.
Nepalese pilgrims. Authorities say a 26 year old man is now in custody after a shooting in Oklahoma ended with one person killed and seven more people injured. This all happened at an outdoor festival in eastern Oklahoma. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation said that an arrest warrant was issued for Skylar Buckner and he turned himself in on Sunday afternoon. Investigators say the shooting was a Memorial Day event in Taft, located about 45 miles southeast of Tulsa. Victims range in age from 9 to 56 years old. A 39 year old woman was killed. Authorities say the injuries of those wounded were considered non life threatening. Time now 443, 77 degrees now. Just ahead, travel nightmares. Thousands of flights have been canceled or delayed on this Memorial Day. Details next in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, millions of people taken to the skies this Memorial Day weekend. Air travel at pre-pandemic levels, but this unofficial preview to summer travel saw some flight delays and cancellations and frustrated passengers. I'm here until I can see what's going on. I came here for my grandbaby's graduation. And I didn't expect to get stuck whatsoever. Hundreds of flights canceled over the holiday weekend with people desperate to get away. Just kind of have an adventure after being uh, home for quite some time with the pandemic and all the restrictions. Delta Airlines, which saw the most cancellations, blaming bad weather and air traffic control actions. So what should you do if your flight gets canceled today? We'll give you the expert tips coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News. New York. All right, well, today is Memorial Day, and a lot of people consider it to be the unofficial start of summer. And lots of people mark the occasion with a trip to the river, but you may notice some changes. Camelia Juarez tells us what you can expect at this season at the river. Keep safe, have fun, and just behave. For some, summer begins as soon as it's warm enough to hop in the river. And with it being Memorial Day weekend, New Braunfels is expecting to see an increase in people and business. I think now that everybody's back out uh, and everybody's wanting to travel, but probably locally, so that's going to bring in some really good crowds. So we're anticipating very big weekends. But the crowd is welcome as many businesses are still recovering from COVID related setbacks. VP of the Visitors Bureau, Mallory Hines, says the anticipation anticipated boom in people will have a positive impact for their economy. There's the ripple effect of those dollars into the community as a restaurant must buy supplies to support their operation and an employee from one of these um, attractions or businesses then goes and spends in this economy. Now, although the river may be low in some places, be sure to bring your life vest. They're free of charge all along the river and make sure your size is appropriate for your weight. The best way to avoid parking hassles or lines of the two shoots is to arrive early. High gas prices have families trading a long road trip for staycations nearby. And despite all the fun that can be had, New Braunfels Police Captain Michael Penshorn wants to remind people to do it safely. People need to make sure they keep their level of intoxication down because you might be the best swimmer in the world, but if you become intoxicated, uh, a river that can be 15, 20 feet deep in some places can definitely get the best of you. New Braunfels PD also says you could be ticketed for bringing glass or styrofoam, but warnings are often issued to protect river critters and fellow swimmers. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take a look outside. I know a lot of people are going to be traveling, you know, maybe back to the Probably city back home um, today. So if you're going to be out and about, I actually that, there's actually quite a bit of there's cars. a lot more people than I thought there were going to be right. Maybe they're getting an early start. Beat so. the traffic. If you are traveling today, please be safe. Stephen Cavazos will be in at 5 a.m. for any situations out on the road. All right, but right now we are joined with Mike Osterhage. So, Mike, hot and humid, what are we looking like? Uh, humidity will drop down a little bit in the afternoon, kind of like what we had over the weekend. But, um, yeah, it's just going to be blazing hot out there. So, if you are outside, just make sure, again, plenty of shade, plenty of water. Don't wait till you're thirsty, as all the experts always say. And, of course, plenty of sunscreen. Beautiful, beautiful sunset over the weekend out there in Wilson County. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. So we've got our morning clouds hanging around here and a lot more humidity as well. Now, we do have some fairly dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So like yesterday, like on Saturday, we'll have morning clouds and then we'll see some sunshine as we go on into the afternoon. It's also going to be pretty windy again today, kind of like what we had around here yesterday. So 
temperatures, which are in the mid and upper 70s throughout much of the area, are going to be staying pretty steady, maybe fluctuating a degree or two this morning. We're going to be staying in the mid 70s, and then the wind is also going to start to uh, pick up, and then we make it into the low to mid 80s throughout the morning hours. We'll see a bit more in the way of some sunshine as we approach noon and already up to 90 at noon. Then we're going to be topping off later on today, 97. The record here in town is 98 degrees. Of course, we didn't hit any records over the weekend. Close to it, about three, four degrees away from the respective records on Saturday and Sunday. But today, it's going to be really really close call as to whether we tie or even set a new record high temperature later on today. All right, as far as the humidity, yes, it is very high right now. We will go through that daily cycle with the humidity dropping down somewhat in the afternoon. Then it'll come back up tomorrow morning. We go through the same thing again in the afternoon with the humidity dropping down somewhat. But despite the fact that it does drop down, we will still have a heat index to deal with. So 97 for high temperature. It's not like the heat index readings are just going to be off the charts, but it's still going to be hot enough out there. And again, got to emphasize all these numbers are always in the shade. You get in the direct sun, you're not only feeling the temperature of the air, but also the sun is heating you up. So it feels that much hotter. Obviously, if you're in the direct sun, we're going to have heat index readings uh, close to 105 108 in Catula later on this afternoon. As far as the humidity, the afternoon dew point temperatures are going to be dropping down somewhat. Now this particular model does have more of a drop later on in the week, and that's still something in question. There is a, a front which is trying to move into the area by late in the week and it's still the jury is still out as to whether it's going to move down in here knock temperatures down a little bit to stay up to the north of us right now it looks like much of the uh, consensus is that it's going to be staying up to the north of us now further on down to the south of us We've been talking about uh, Hurricane Agatha down there in the eastern Pacific Ocean. And it, right now, it looks like it's just going to move on into portions of southern Mexico, Central America, and just sort of languish there. There was uh, some thinking for a while as to whether it would move into the Bay of Campeche and then become... A Atlantic hurricane, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the situation as of right now. So the forecast around here today, it is going to be sizzling hot 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. So a lot of clouds in the morning and then a lot more sunshine later on this afternoon. And like I said, the record is 98 degrees going to be really close to it. It's also going to be windy winds out of the south, primarily 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting at times to 30. You know, I, my, some of my trash cans were knocked mm -hmm. over this morning when I was driving to work because like, it was so windy, even in nighttime hours. And then the next few days, not as hot in the afternoon. And, you know, we're only talking a couple of degrees here. But then it looks like another sizzling weekend coming up. Morning clouds, afternoon sunshine. Yeah, those wind gusts, they woke me up this morning. I was yeah. like, what, is, is there rain coming in? Nope, just some wind. I can't help but to notice no rain. Mm -mm. Small chance on Wednesday. Mm. But of course, not even worth putting anything on the graphic there. So, yeah, dry period. Jeez. We right. had some of that rain last week. Oh, Mike Ostage, thank you so much. 453, 77 degrees now. Well, after the break, remembering the victims of the tragedy in Uvalde and how you can help your kids who may be asking some tough questions. Welcome back. Right now on KSAT.com, we continue to remember the 19 children and two teachers who lost their lives in that shooting in Uvalde. We know some of those students had just attended an award ceremony with their parents. Now, their parents, unaware that award ceremony would be the last time they would see their children alive. Now, some of those survivors in the shooting, they said that the teachers put themselves between the gunmen and other students, using themselves as a shield, doing all they could to try to protect the students. Also on our website, how to help children deal with this trauma. Your kids may be asking a lot of tough questions and you may be struggling to find the right answers. We have tips from a mental health expert about how to help children deal and understand this trauma. Time now, 456, 77 degrees out. Ahead in our next half hour, more from Uvalde as the people there try their best to heal. I have to send her and know that you don't know what's gonna happen. And I know it's scary for the parents. It's hard for them. And nobody knows. We don't know what they're going through. And to see those little faces on those crosses, it's, it's not right. This should not have been something that happened. Those kids had a whole life ahead of them. 
from this to walking into the school thinking you're okay one second and then the next second you're screaming for help and you don't know what's gonna happen next. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I've seen firsthand the pain of the families. At the church, we've given away food, we've, we've done uh, several activities for the, for the families, and we see the pain that they're going through. So to us, as a community, it's important to join them because we're all Uvalde in this moment. A new reaction from Uvalde this morning, the community coming together after unspeakable hurt. Good morning. It is Monday, May 30th. It is Memorial Day. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And just a reminder, on this Memorial Day, City Hall and most municipal offices will be closed today. That's right. So public safety and emergency services, they will still remain in operation. But we know that this is a day to remember those who served our country, honor them and honor their families. We know that Fort Sam Houston having their first public memorial service since 2019, Mike. And what can people expect out there? It is going to be blazing hot. Now, I know the services are this morning. Um, it's very warm and humid right now, so lots and lots of water. Then by later on this afternoon, uh, it's just going to be blazing sunshine. Just about a repeat of what we had yesterday, maybe down a couple of notches. We're at 78 right now, and that bottom number, dew point at 69, means there's a ton of humidity out there. Got a pretty good breeze right now. Winds out of the south at 14 miles per hour, and it is going to be breezy all day long, sort of like what we had yesterday. We had some pretty good winds overnight as well. We're going to make it up to 97 later on today. The record here in town is 98. Obviously, it's going to be a close call as far as uh, either tying or setting a new record high temperature. The aquifer yesterday, at least some good news out of this, went up uh, four tenths of a foot. And as far as the allergens, mold is moderate. And we do have little amounts of grass, pine, and pigweed. Got enough humidity out there this morning that we do actually have a heat index to deal with. So temperatures just add a few degrees to the actual air temperature right now. Now, but just kind of a uh, little little hint of what's to come later on today and pretty much you can add up roughly 20 degrees to these numbers and that's what heat index readings are going to be later on this afternoon or even higher than that in some cases in portions of the hill country so we are going to have those heat index heat index is not going to be just outrageously high today but enough to notice it, I guess the best way to put it. So this morning, cloudy, warm and humid. Then later on this afternoon, mostly sunny. We will be in the upper 90s. Again, the record, like I said, is 98 degrees. Also, it is going to be breezy today. The rest of the week, now don't get too excited about not quite as hot. I'm talking by about a couple of degrees, two, three degrees uh, lower as far as high temperatures. We'll take anything we can get, but then we go into the weekend and it looks like it is going to be blazing again for the upcoming weekend. All details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, a pleasant Memorial Day to you, sir. What's going on? Likewise, Mike. Good morning. Right now we are getting a look at the roadways. It's pretty quiet right now as we get that drive around town. Let's go ahead and get that wide look at Trans Guy. There's 410 at Callahan, 410 at McCullough. Really just a few folks out there. So it it does look like a holiday out on the roadways, but just remember to stay alert and be safe. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because while we're seeing some empty roads there, we did notice that a crash popped up over near the northwest side of State Highway 151 near Loop 1604. Uh, I was combing through the Transguide cameras, so we weren't able to detect, detect that is any flashing lights, but uh, we'll talk to our friends over there a little bit later on and find out if that's going to be causing any issues for drivers that may have to head through there. Uh, let's take a look at those travel times. If your destination is the Alamo City, that journey from Burr looking like 25 minutes right now on I-10 coming in those eastbound lanes. No need to hurry coming in from Bolverde, 28 minutes. So a little bit of a slowdown, but that's due to some road work crews probably getting out there. And right now, 26 minutes on I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So just remember to drive safe. There is no need to rush when you head out the door this morning. Again, just some quiet roadways, but there are still some active construction zones. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. So we continue to speak with families in Uvalde, families who are now there working to come together to heal and also families visiting Uvalde to show respect. Our Steve Spreeser was in their town square throughout the weekend. And he found out some of the most vocal about change in the community were some of the youngest in Uvalde. Welcome to Town Square Park, which is in the heart of Uvalde. It is a place that has become sacred ground for a lot of people in this community and pe people really all over the country who have come here to pay their respects to the 21 victims of the Robb Elementary shooting. 
They include 21 crosses that have now been covered with flowers, covered with stuffed animals, and each of those crosses with personal messages to each of the victims from family members, and they're very heart touching. What you also notice about this area is there are a number of kids, a number of second, third, and fourth graders, just like those who died in Robb Elementary. And they have their own thoughts on exactly what happened that day and the people they will miss, as well as a young mother holding her baby. Take a listen. It's hard to, th to think that in a couple of years I have to send her and know that you don't know what's gonna happen. And I know it's scary for the parents. It's hard for them. And nobody knows, we don't know what they're going through. And to see those little faces on those crosses, it's, it's not right. This should not have been something that happened. With her baby Isabella in her arms, a mother worries about the next generation. A generation very evident at this memorial. Children remembering children lost. An 11 year old with a blunt message. I have dreams, don't kill me. A brother and sister wishing they could have told two of their favorite teachers goodbye. It's sad to know that our teachers, that, that they're resting in heaven. Some of them were my friend's siblings and it's just, you know, you wish you could have been there for them and, you know, you wish this would never happen and it's just sad that it happens. I feel like I'm sad because of all the kids and I feel heartbroken for all the kids and all the parents because they're not going to be able to see their child no more. Did you know anybody? Yes. You knew one of the victims? Yeah. Oh who, did you know? who did you know? Jacqueline Caceres. She, she was nice, kind, had a lot of good humor, always had a smile. She would never let someone down. She was always a nice person. I didn't believe it until I, until I saw that her mom was the one who posted it on Facebook and it was, it was unbelievable to me. I, I really didn't know what to do and I just started crying. Town Square Park is traditionally a place where people in Uvalde come together, so I guess it's no surprise that this is where this makeshift memorial stands. No word on how long it will be standing or if they'll make this a permanent part of Town Square Park here in Uvalde, a place where people have come to grieve and where it does seem people have come to heal. In Uvalde, Steve Spreester, KSAT 12 News. Well, you may be wondering how you can help in addition to giving blood. People can also donate to the official funds set up to help the families of the school shooting victims. We have those official funds listed on KSAT.com. Just click on this article. Time now, 508, 77 degrees out. Well, five people are dead after two boats collided head on in a Georgia river after the break. What we're now learning about this investigation. Let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Today is a day to honor those who served our country. It is Memorial Day. We know there's a lot of festivities out and about. We're gonna check in with Mike Osterhage and Stephen Cavazos in just a bit. Well, accident reconstruction teams will be in Savannah, Georgia, hoping to learn exactly why two boats collided, killing five people. One man now under arrest, and he is among four people who actually survived this crash. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has a story. This morning, investigators in Georgia are trying to figure out what caused a boat crash that left five people dead. Two boats collided on the Wilmington River near Savannah Saturday morning. Nine people total were on board the boats, traveling in opposite directions when they collided. It's a very, very sharp corner. They were going so fast that there's no way that they could have, you know, corrected. And then when they hit, the damage was significant. Everybody flew out of the boat. Among those dead, four members of the same family, a history teacher at a Christian school in Savannah, Chris Leffler, and his wife, Lori. Their two sons, 23-year-old Zach and 17-year-old Nate. The church gathering Sunday to mourn the Leffler family. Their daughter Katie survived the crash with minor injuries. We pray for Chris, Laurie, Nate and Zach who sadly lost their lives. 
The fifth victim, riding on the other boat when the two collided, has been identified as 37-year-old Robert Chauncey from Savannah. Dramatic video from the Coast Guard rescuing one of the boaters. One of the survivors, a local business owner, Mark Stiegel, was arrested and charged with boating under the influence in relation to the crash. ABC affiliate WJCL snapping this photo of Stiegel speaking with law enforcement Saturday as rescue crews looked for victims. We watched the search and rescue team and the helicopter and the various boats mm -hmm. look for the victims. It was just surreal. It just was extremely sad. The investigation into what caused these two boats to collide could take four to six weeks. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Time now, 513, 77 degrees out. Well, after the break, a recap from yesterday's leading essay segment. We'll hear from the Texas Blood and Tissue Center about how you can help and donate. And also we hear from Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar, who talked about the response from first responders in Uvalde. It takes energy to take on the world. So whether you're breaking a sweat, breaking down barriers, or breaking the laws of gravity. Keep moving with the ultimate energy bar. We bake in delicious, wholesome ingredients, purposefully crafted with a blend of protein, fat, and carbs. Because the more good you put in, the more great you get out. Cliff, baked in goodness. Now introducing Cliff Thins, a crispy, craveable 100 calorie snack. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine Mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA-approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. I've traveled every road in this here land. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've traveled, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. In the aftermath of the horror in Uvalde, we, we know there are still so many questions people are asking and how they can help. That's right. So we have a full list of monetary donations that you can make to official funds right now on KSAT.com. But of course, you can also donate blood. During yesterday's Leading Essay segment, we were joined by Adrian Mendoza with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. If you donate today, more, more than likely the blood is actually going out to a hospital tomorrow. Um, in fact, when we think about the uh, emergency that happened on Tuesday, when we got the call around noon, we had blood available that had been collected the previous days to send out right away to the scene. It was actually airlifted via helicopter to Uvalde. Um, and so the blood that's collected today will be available for an emergency. And you know, if there's unimaginable things that could happen tomorrow, it, this happens all too frequent. Um, we will be ready because of donors today, tomorrow, uh, for the future events. And if you're interested in donating, signing up to donate, you can do so right now on KSAT.com. But there's a lot of other questions people are asking, specifically questions about the response pertaining to law enforcement in Uvalde. So yesterday we also heard from Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. So maybe that's a key indicator as we go into looking at this thing and how to prevent them in the future. Maybe that's a key indicator that people absolutely need to report. But I think it's also incumbent upon the social media platforms to recognize their role in this and being able to detect these things earlier and do something about it, report, reporting it to law enforcement. We all know there's a right to privacy, but but also when you look at it this way, that this could have been an indicator had somebody said something. Uh, we could have averted this this horrible tragedy just by 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 somebody reporting that conduct. Sheriff Javier Salazar really saying if you see something, say something, especially on social media. You can now watch both interviews right now on KSAT.com. And don't miss our leading essay segments every Sunday, 8 a.m. on GMSA. All right, it's 519, 77 degrees. We're going to head over to Stephen Cavasso's slow morning on this Memorial Day. Yeah, not really a lot to talk about, thankfully, on my end. But, uh, you know, we know some people have to head out the door for whatever reason. So let's take a look around town and see what you can expect for this Monday morning. 410 at Jackson Keller, just quiet roadways right now. Lots of pavement. So good news for those drivers that do have to travel in the next few moments. 37 at Houston, 37 at Hackberry. You just see light traffic. A few folks out there this morning. Uh, but as I mentioned, as we get a look at the map, you see that we do have some of those active construction zones. One of the spots that 
we want our drivers to be aware of is what's going to be taking place here of 281 on the north side of San Antonio bridge work. We know that there is a ton of work that takes place on 281 every day, but this is actually going to start Wednesday, June 1st, and that will last up until Friday. That's June 3rd. It will start at 9 in the morning to and last until 6 in the evening. What drivers can expect during that time is a full closure of the Marshall Road intersection. So as I mentioned, just make sure you plan ahead and plan your commute and grab your phones because we have that QR code right there. Scan that QR code by opening your camera app and tap the middle of your screen. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that has an updated list of all the closures that are taking place in your area. Guys. All right, Steven, Question. thank you so much. Ooh. Well, I asked you to. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you uh, see Top Gun? I've not even seen the original. Yeah, oh. I was watching Stranger Things this weekend. It's on. Oh. It, okay, next, it's on Netflix, Steven. Yeah, but yeah. no, Stranger Things right now. Wait, 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 good, wait, wait the question. Way, Steven. Steven, how is Stranger Things? It was very strange. Okay. It was scary. It was so good, though. <laughs> Okay, back to what I was talking okay, about. Okay, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry, Mike. Mike. <laughs> sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. It is a conversation here. So, but Top Gun <laughs> is fantastic. Uh, it is fantastic. If you're a Top Gun fan, close to being better than the first. I have heard such great reviews about it. Great homage to the original one, the, the way they tied it together, uh, to the late Tony Scott, the director of the first one. So, Mike, I know that you were bragging earlier about your uh, multiple appearances in fighter jets. <laughs> I rode with the Thunderbirds one time. Oh, that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. I'll show you the video later on. So, <laughs> anyway, an extra. my kids all the time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, beautiful. Yeah, if you want to stay in the air conditioning today, uh, heading off to the, the movies, going to see Ty is well worth the price of admission. Beautiful view. Uh, boy, if you can't be inside, might as well be near some water. Find a friend with a pool or go by a lake or the go down to the coast or something because uh, anytime you're going to be near a water fleet, that's going to cool things down because it's going to be a hot one today. A lot of clouds hanging around here this morning, a lot of humidity and a lot of wind as well. We've had windy conditions all night long. Sustained winds uh, 15, 20 miles per hour, even 28 out there in Rock Springs. Again, that's the sustained wind and then you've got Wind gusts about 37 in Rock Springs, 29 here in town. Same thing down around Beeville, 29 mile per hour wind gusts right now. And it is going to be staying on the, the gusty side throughout the rest of today. So definitely hang on your hats. Some of my garbage cans were knocked over in the overnight hours because of the windy conditions going into work this morning. So we'll have a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Temperatures will stay pretty much where they are, maybe fluctuated degree or two. So we'll stay right around mid seventies here in town. And then sun starts to creep on out here as we go into the mid late morning hours. We make it up into the eighties and then all the way up to 90 today at noon. We're going to be topping off at 97. The record is 98. So we're obviously going to be just right on the doorstep of that. And like I said, it stays windy all day long with those sustained winds that are going to be 15, 20 miles per hour. And then the gusts on top of that. As far as the heat index, <clears throat> We will see somewhat of a drop in the humidity in the afternoon. We go through the daily cycle where there's a lot more humidity in the morning and then more uh, or lower humidity in the afternoon, but still enough out there to put those heat index readings a couple of degrees above the actual air temperatures. And we're still going to be seeing, you know, it's going to feel like anywhere from 105 to 110. And that's where your body doesn't cool itself all that well. So you really got to take it easy. And again, that's in the shade to get in the sun feels even hotter than that. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature up to 97. It records 98. It's going to be windy today and we are going to be staying hot the rest of the week down at least a couple of degrees as we go into the middle to latter portion of the week. So we'll take anything we can get. We're still going to be well above normal by roughly five degrees on each end of the scale. A lot of clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon, but then we go back toward the upper 90s by the weekend. Still Again, no rain. Top Gun, great movie. Okay. <laughs> Stranger Things, great series. Okay. There okay. you go. It's a win-win. Time now, 524, 77 degrees out. All right, after the break, remembering the lives lost in Uvalde and how Northside ISD bus drivers honored the victims this weekend. Welcome back. Right now on KSAT.com, we continue to remember the 19 children and two teachers who lost their lives in Uvalde. Now you can see all the biographies right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, in case you missed it this week and take a look at your screen, Northside ISD bus drivers found their own unique way to pay tribute to the victims of Uvalde. They parked their buses together in the shape of a heart. You can see right there and bus drivers and bus assistants and their families held hands and stood together in formation that spelled the word Uvalde. 
The organizer says he was inspired to do something because the massacre hit too close to home. He says school should always be the safest place for children. Time now, 527, 77 degrees out. Ahead in our next half hour, more from Uvalde as the people there try their best to heal. How do you think this community will heal from this? We'll heal. Well, if we want them to heal, we need some new rules on here. If we want, if, if we want, if we want to heal, we need some new rules. Because if we don't change nothing, it's going to be the same and it's going to happen again and again. We need some new rules. Some people shouldn't have guns or um, weapons, you know. Some people that have the wrong mentality shouldn't have some. Um, and we're angry at the same time, but it's the whole community is so sad, and we can't even sleep. I'm being sad because um, my brother was in elementary school, but my brother didn't get shot because he made it out of the window. Yesterday, an immensely emotional situation throughout Uvalde as the community tries to come together to heal in the aftermath of that shooting. Good morning and welcome back. It is 531 this morning. It is Monday, May 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It is Memorial Day and we take time today to remember and honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice dying, defending our country. And uh, we talked about it earlier, some, the ceremony happening at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery for the first time. It's going to be open to the public since 2019. Mike, those who are heading out today, you're saying hold on to your hats. It's going to be windy and it's going to be hot. Yeah, uh, wind has been around all night long. It was windy yesterday afternoon and uh, we still have some pretty good winds out there right now. Winds have been gusting even in parts of the hill country, 35 miles per hour and stronger than that. So it will be breezy all day long. We got our clouds hanging around here this morning. So that's going to be a little bit of, I guess, a little bit of relief. Now we still have the humidity out there this morning, though, but at least we're not going to have just blazing sunshine on top of that humidity this morning. If you are heading on out to uh, Fort Sam 78 degrees, that number remains very high. Dew points up to 69. So we go through the 24 hour cycle. Humidity dropped down somewhat yesterday afternoon, comes back up overnight. It'll drop down later on today. Sustained winds are out of the south primarily at 14 miles per hour, but then gusting 25, close to 30 even here in town. 80 is what it feels like right now. Same thing at Stinson, 82 in Pleasanton with all that humidity, the uh, heat index. And we'll have somewhat of a heat index to deal with later on today. But again, humidity will be dropping down later on. Mold is moderate. Grass, pine, and pigweed are all on the low side. 90 at noon, we'll have some sunshine squeezing through this morning. 83 degrees at 10 o'clock, 90 at noon. Then we top off at 97 later on today. Wind out of the south, 15, 20 miles per hour and gusting from there. The record today is 98, so we're going to be really close to that. Still going to be hot tomorrow. We shave off a couple of degrees going into the mid to latter portion of the week. Still on the hot side, though, but then it looks like we go back up close to the upper 90s by next weekend. All the details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, I would assume there's not much on the roads this morning. Uh, that is a safe assumption, Mike. Right now, you can just see there's 1604 at FM 78. Pretty empty, almost like a ghost road there, but let's get a look around town, see what people can expect if they have to maybe travel in the next few minutes. I tend to Vance Jackson, just a few folks out there this morning. 1604 Pandera, a very quiet start to this Monday morning, but uh, we know that some people do have to travel, so just be alert. As you see here, there are some active construction zones with that bird's eye view of the map, but as we bring you in, we do have a stall right there off of I-35 southbound near Ritterman Road. Uh, we know a lot of people will be traveling today, so just remember to check your vehicles before you get out on the roadways and make sure you plan ahead. There's still some of those the construction zones, so uh, we just updated that list on KSAT.com. Uh, but right now, the, Al the destination to the Alamo City is not looking bad. 30 minutes, though, coming in from I-10 and Seguin in those westbound lanes of I-10. 22 if you're heading in from 87 and Lavernia, and a 29-minute drive time for our friends uh, down in Floresville. So just remember to pack your patience this morning, but also just stay alert. So we'll keep our eyes on the road, but make sure you do the same. Max Arrow. Thank you, Stephen. Well, the Justice Department now announcing it is investigating the law enforcement response to the shooting in Uvalde. 
That news as victims' families press the president to take legislative action on gun safety during his visit to Uvalde, where they are beginning to lay their loved ones to rest today. ABC's Justin Finch explains. This is new video ABC News obtained from outside Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas. They're getting the kids out. Showing police breaking windows, racing to rescue students. We also hear what appears to be dispatch audio sharing with officers that 911 operators are on the phone with students trapped in those classrooms. Texas law enforcement clarifying those calls minute by minute. She identified herself and whispered she's in room 112. At 1210, she called back in room 12, advised there are multiple dead. Again at 1216, she's called back and said there's eight to nine students alive. At Robb Elementary, sources tell ABC News federal agents arrived to chaos and confusion. Those sources going on to say a tactical team defied local authorities and entered that school at 1250 p.m., fatally shooting the suspect 77 minutes after the terror began. They heard repeated orders, the sources said, not to go into the classroom, but eventually they convinced their own superiors to let them do whatever they could do to rescue children. President Joe Biden and the First Lady traveled to Uvalde on Sunday, paying respects to the growing memorial outside Robb Elementary and later meeting with victims' families, survivors, and first responders. Do something! Do something! The crowd chanting, do something. The president responding, we will. The Justice Department is now planning a review of the law enforcement response in Uvalde as it has for past mass shootings. The department vowing a fair, transparent and independent investigation. The findings will be made public. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. I personally can't thank my son's teacher enough because I feel what she did um, save all their lives, honestly. That was Brianna Ruiz, a Uvalde mother whose son was inside Robb Elementary during the shooting. Her nine-year-old son, Daniel Garza, survived the shooting but is still feeling that impact of what just happened five days ago. Now, Daniel says he saw the gunman through the window. He watched his teacher lock the door, then play dead on the floor while coaching students to remain quiet. His mom hopes to finally see change. I just feel, like I said, unfortunately, that there has to be more um, measures taken to ensure that our children are safe and secure. I am very thankful um, that he is here. Uh, it's just um, like we had, a, I had reported before, the same child that I dropped off that morning I feel like a piece of him stayed there. And though the family is grateful Daniel survived, they're grieving the loss of another family member, his cousin, Brianna's niece, nine-year-old Ellie Garcia. She's described by family as, quote, very happy and very outgoing. And of course, yesterday we had wall-to-wall -wall coverage of President Joe Biden arriving in Uvalde around 10 in the morning mm -hmm. or in San Antonio at 10 in the morning and we went all day. We had a whole crew out there and there you can see him and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden making their first stop as soon as they went to Uvalde. They went to the memorial at Robb Elementary School. And one of the things that I really wanted to point out about yesterday was it was more so of the community coming together. Yes, right. the president was there. Yes, the First Lady was there. But it was really amazing to hear from not only families who live in Uvalde, who are now working to come together and, and try to heal, but it was amazing to hear from families who were visiting, were really paying their respects. And yes, the president and first lady were there. We, we watched them arrive to Lackland, and then we watched them get on Marine One and arrive to Uvalde, and we tracked their movement throughout the day. But they, they spoke to the families of victims, they spoke to first responders. And that was all done privately. Mm -hmm. And I think that was, the most beautiful thing about yesterday, um, the focus really was on 
the families and the victims and healing. And it was so beautiful to really, my favorite part about all of this yesterday was hearing from the local children out of Uvalde. Steve Spreester um, did an interview and I mean, it just really, it touched me. This little girl, she must have been 10, 11 years old. She had that sign mm -hmm. that says, I wanna live, I wanna study, I wanna be a dentist, please don't kill me. And right there, and she spoke to Steve and she said, you know, um, th she's, she wants things to change and she's afraid that if things don't change, that it's gonna happen again. She was very well spoken and that's, these are, these are, these are messages coming from young children in Uvalde. And then the, the mother in the maroon that we keep seeing, that one, uh, unimaginable. And she said it best herself saying, you know, holding her small child, saying that all 19 students and two teachers had so much more life left to live and their lives were taken too early. We also heard from that choir, um, mm -hmm. I mean, just goosebumps hearing that choir that just came out after Sunday service right there. You can hear them there. It, it, was, it was beautiful. Let's take a listen. So powerful. Steve Spreeser was there at the memorial, the makeshift memorial, and really talking about how they just left church and came to the memorial and started singing in such powerful moments throughout the morning, throughout the day. And another thing that I noticed, uh, Lee Wallman, she was live outside of Robb Elementary School uh, late, late into the evening, and she showed this line. Um, she said it went on for blocks of people just in line for blocks tr uh, just to lay flowers, to hand to a DPS trooper, because they can't even get to the, to you know, school. they can't even get to that, the, the line. It's protected by DPS right now to lay those flowers down. And this has become the biggest memorial in town, that Town Square Park. And Steve just talked about the atmosphere that it was so quiet. The closer you get to those crosses at, at Town Square Park, how quiet it was, people were writing messages. And of course, we have all this coverage on all of our social media pages in ksat.com. Time now, 542, 77 degrees out. Well, deputy in hot water this morning after the break, what he's accused of doing that has him out of a job. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 77 degrees now, what is the rest of Memorial Day look like? What do the roads look like? We're going to check in with Stephen and Mike in just a bit. Welcome back for the second time in less than just a week. Another Bear County deputy lost his job, now facing serious charges. The deputy is behind bars after allegedly attempting to smuggle marijuana into the Bear County Jail. Camelia Juarez tells us Sheriff Javier Salazar had some strong words for the accused deputy and those just starting their careers in law enforcement. Not only are you going to bring a premature end to your career, it's going to be an embarrassing end to your career. Sheriff Javier Salazar says an inmate was caught speaking in code on a phone call, which led deputies to discover an operation to smuggle drugs into the jail. An investigation revealed the deputy had both real and synthetic marijuana in his car outside the jail. 21 year old Colby Counts Ramirez was arrested on three charges, criminal conspiracy to commit substances in a correctional facility, possession of a controlled substance and possession of marijuana. The arrest comes only days after another deputy was arrested for injuring an inmate. Now the deputy Ivan Torres is accused of pushing an inmate to the ground where he hit a bed, leaving lacerations on the inmate's face. He's charged with official oppression, assault to bodily injury and ultimately lost his job. A new class of deputies is set to graduate Tuesday. Sheriff Salazar says he sets expectations and warns deputies to the consequences on their first day. I don't want anybody to be able to plead ignorance and say that nobody's ever told them. Uh, I would, you know, when it comes down to the point that we're, that we're terminating somebody uh, or, and or arresting somebody, uh, I make it clear, look, I personally remember having this conversation with you and here's the form that you signed. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. 
Time now, 547, 77 degrees out. Treating the wounded. After the break, we'll hear from some of the team at University Hospital who treated some of the victims of Uvalde. Good morning, everyone. Time now is 550. Let's get a look at the roadways at this time. 410 and McCullough, we're getting closer to that 6 a.m. hour. Although some folks may be off from work today, we know that some do have to head out the door and get their day started. But you can see there, 410 at Jackson Keller, there's not really a lot to talk about. Just some quiet roadways, so some good news there. But as I mentioned, there are still those construction spots to be on the lookout for. Let's talk about what's taking place right over here off 281 on the north side of San Antonio. We mentioned this a little bit earlier in the newscast, but just as a quick reminder for those viewers just waking up for this. This will start Wednesday, June 1st and last up until Friday, June 3rd, nine in the morning to six in the eight, even six in the morning. That is you'll expect a full closure of the Marshall Road intersection that will be planned again for Wednesday, but we have an updated list of all the traffic closures that are planned in your area. Just head over to ksat.com slash traffic and look for the closures. Mike has something pretty to show us, I think. Oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, this should be the uh, sunrise later on today. We've got clouds starting off some sun, excuse me, sunset later on today. Sunrises are not uh, that great just because we've got a lot of clouds out there. But boy, that's a pretty, pretty picture. Thank you very much for that. There's the clouds off in the distance that you can see. And well, traffic over there at 410 by the airports moving along pretty well. It is windy. It's been windy all night long. It's going to stay windy throughout the rest of today. Sustained winds 25 miles per hour at Rock Springs right now. 14 at the airport, 16 Beeville and down along the coast at 21. And then the gusts on top of that. 29 at the airport, uh, 31 at Rock Springs. Actually, just about half an hour ago, we had wind gusts that were around 35 or even higher out there in portions of the hill country. So it is going to stay very windy throughout the day. Temperatures because of the cloud cover, all this humidity out there aren't going much of anywhere this morning. We may fluctuate a couple of degrees. We'll bottom out at 75 here in town, then start the warming process. We'll also see some sunshine squeezing through by the late morning hours, 83 at 10 o'clock, and then we'll make it all the way up to 90 at noon. So once that sun comes out and the air starts to dry out a little bit, we see the, the humidity drop down somewhat in the afternoon. That allows things, along with obviously the sunshine, to heat things up. 97 degrees for high temperature. Records 98, going to be close to that. And as far as going into the future and any sort of rain chances, don't count on anything. We have more sunshine in the afternoon, clouds in the morning, humidity comes back up tomorrow morning, drops down somewhat in the afternoon. Now, by Wednesday, there is this one particular computer model does have a very small chance. I would not get excited about this at all. Don't even have any mention of it on the seven day forecast, but this one model does have a couple of sprinkly showers trying to pop up mid morning. If we get them. That's going to be great. I wouldn't count on anything though, as far as any rain throughout at least about the, the next seven days, perhaps a little mist in the morning here and there just because of all the humidity 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today makes it up to 97. Again, the record is 98. It's going to be windy today day as well. And then the next couple of days still going to be very hot tomorrow and breezy. We will see temperatures get trimmed just a couple of notches toward the mid and latter part of the week. A lot of morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, but the heat comes back in here by the weekend. Sarah, Max. Thank you so much. Time now 553 77 degrees out. All right, just ahead a warning about strawberries why you should check the ones you have in your fridge right now. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we have the latest on the deadly school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. The Justice Department says that it's reviewing law enforcement's response and what one key senator is saying about gun control negotiations. Also, the holiday travel chaos, hundreds of flights canceled over the weekend, the best and worst times that you can travel this morning. We'll have millions on the move this Memorial Day, so important information right here on GMA. All right, the FDA now investigating an outbreak of hepatitis A in three states potentially linked to organic strawberries. Now, federal health officials say there have been 17 hepatitis A cases reported as part of this outbreak. This outbreak in California, Minnesota, and North Dakota. The liver infection has resulted in 12 hospitalizations thus far. The brands involved are Fresh Campo and HEB. They're sold at Aldi, Kroger, Safeway, Sprouts, Trader Joe's, and Walmart, among a few other stores. Most of the illnesses were reported between March 28th to April 30th, but hepatitis A symptoms can last up to two months. Time now, 557, 76 degrees out. 
We have a lot more to come on GMSA. A motorcyclist in the hospital this morning after being hit by a vehicle on the city's east side. We're gonna have the latest on his condition. Plus, gas prices at record highs this Memorial Day weekend. When will we start to see this drop? We're gonna hear from the experts. And we continue our coverage in Uvalde, hearing from families, hearing from the community as they continue to try to heal. community in Uvalde continues to mourn, continues to heal. A new investigation now underway over how law enforcement responded to the shooting. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and thank you for starting your day with us. It is Monday, May 30th. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this Memorial Day and Today is Memorial Day, so we want to let you know about some office closures. That's right. So it is a day to honor those who sacrificed their lives for our country. A lot of closures going on today. City Hall, most municipal offices closed. All metro health clinics and offices also closed. Central Library and all branch libraries are closed for the holiday as well. And we want to let you know that public safety and emergency services will remain in operation. It's also important to note that since 2019, for the first time, uh, Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery is open to the public for their commemoration ceremony. It's happening today at 9 a.m. That's right. So, Mike, the music starts at 9 a.m. What can people expect out there? It's going to be breezy like it has been overnight. Lots of clouds. Now, we're seeing a couple of breaks right now, but also very, very humid this morning. Temperatures are, are up there as well. There's those couple of breaks that we are seeing right now, but uh, don't count on. It'd be nicer if there was a whole bunch of clouds around this morning if you're heading on out there instead of some sunshine. That's just going to be heating things up, but yes, very warm and very humid. And of course, then a high temperature later on this afternoon. We are going to be making it up to 97 degrees, mostly sunny skies, and it will continue to be breezy throughout the rest of today. Temperatures around the metropolitan area right now, everybody is in the mid and some upper 70s. Then you can add about, uh, well, they need two, three degrees, and that's what it actually feels like because of all the humidity that we have right now. Mold is on the moderate side. Grass, pine, pigweed are all on the light side. The updated count's gonna be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. 75 this morning, so we may fluctuate a couple of degrees when it's all said and done. Lots of clouds, those couple of breaks as you saw, and then already up to 90 by noon. So once that sun comes out more and more later on this morning, we are gonna be seeing things heat up very quickly. Again, it is gonna remain on the blustery side today with those winds. Even at times this morning, we've seen some gusts 30, 35 miles per hour. That'll be the case all day long. 97 for high temperature today. The record is 98 degrees. Going to stay hot the rest of the week. Maybe not quite as hot. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything on the road, sir? Not really, Mike. Uh, I mean, we're getting a look right now at 410 at Broadway. You can see just one vehicle making their way by there, but 281 at Grayson, it does look a little bit busier than what we last showed you. US 90 at Couples, this is usually a spot where we tend to see more traffic. So uh, just remember to drive safe, but we know some people are staying at home. Others may have to head out for travel plans or maybe just head to work. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the map because we're not picking up any crashes, but you know, Notice that there is a stall off of 35 near 410 over on the east side of San Antonio. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit later. That just popped up, but uh, other than that, it has been a pretty quiet start to this Monday morning. So that's some good news for anybody that, again, does have travel plans right now. Let's take a look at these travel plans if your destination is San Antonio, because right now we are seeing a pleasant drive from Pleasanton with 29 minutes at this hour. Castroville coming in from 90. This should actually say to loop 1604. That's a 19 minute drive time and a 17 minute drive time if you're heading in from Lytle on 35 northbound. So uh, right now things are looking like they're in decent shape as we are now in a new hour at 6 a.m. But this is also an hour when we tend to see that traffic build up. But we'll see how the morning shapes up and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. We we'll continue with our coverage in Uvalde. President Joe Biden, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, spending yesterday in the community offering condolences to the victims' families affected by the mass shooting at Robb Elementary. Lee Walvin spoke with people along the president's route about what his visit means for their community.
Air Force One touched down at Kelly Airfield in San Antonio with President Joe Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden. The couple shook the hands of Mayor Ron Nuremberg and military leaders before quickly loading on to Marine One to come to Uvalde. To have the president come down to the district uh, is incredibly important for the healing of this country as we go forward. Their first stop, Robb Elementary, where the First Lady touched the photos of each of the 19 children killed and the two teachers. They were joined by the Uvalde CISD superintendent, Dr. Hall Harrell, and Robb Elementary's principal, Mandy Gutierrez. Less than a mile away, President Biden and Dr. Jill Biden joined the community for mass at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. It breaks your heart, it breaks your heart to, to happen here, what has happened here in our hearts. And we ca carry these people in our hearts and our prayers go out to them too. Yes, and the church mass was beautiful too. That we got to see the president. Crowds gathered outside of the church when it filled. Frances Estrada and her seven-year-old granddaughter, Violet, watched from outside. Uvalde is their home. I'm glad he's coming. I'm glad he's coming to support Uvalde. And I feel, I'm just so sad. I can't explain. Violet's older brother made it out of Robb Elementary by climbing through a window. I was so scared that if my brother got shot, I was going to be so worried about him, but he did it. The Biden's visit with the families of victims and survivors of this tragedy was kept private. It happened after the hour-long mass ended. Crazy for the president to be all the way here in Uvalde, uh, to be in Texas too, and uh, just to be offering his grief uh, with the families here and with the community. The presidential visit wrapping up at Garner Field Airport, where the Bidens spoke with first responders. President Biden tweeting this before taking off, quote, we're committed to turning this pain into action. That was Lee Waldman reporting. So as you might have seen yesterday during the coverage, the crowd at Town Square in Uvalde growing larger by the day. Our Steve Spreester was out there and he spoke with State Senator Roland Gutierrez. He says this massacre has changed the course of his political career. So Gutierrez now working on creating an office in Uvalde so he can continue to support the victims and help them grieve. I'll tell you what many have told me. Don't let my child's death be in vain. Make sure that they do something. And so I'm going to talk about this until Greg Abbott and my Republican colleagues do something. Okay, thank you. State Senator Gutierrez has signed a letter along with other Texas Democrats who are demanding Governor Greg Abbott invoke a special session to pass stricter gun laws. He also talked about the Biden administration working on a federal grant towards tearing down Robb Elementary and the building another campus. So in the aftermath of this horrific shooting, we know there are still a lot of people out there around the country, around Texas, trying to make sense of it, trying to make sense of what seems like a senseless act of violence. A lot of people asking, how can we stop this from happening again? Well, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar joined Leading SA yesterday. We talked about a lot, but he really wanted to affirm the notion of see something, say something, especially when it comes to social media. So maybe that's a key indicator as we go into looking at this thing and how to prevent them in the future. Maybe that's a key indicator that people absolutely need to report. But I think it's also incumbent upon the social media platforms to recognize their role in this and being able to detect these things earlier and do something about it, report, reporting it to law enforcement. We all know there's a right to privacy, but but also I have to send her and know that you don't know what's going to happen. And I know it's scary for the parents. It's hard for them, and nobody knows. We don't know what they're going through. And to see those little faces on those crosses, it's, it's not right. This should not have been something that happened. Those kids had a whole life ahead of them. From this to walking into a school thinking you're okay one second, and then the next second, you're screaming for help and you don't know what's going to happen next. Our coverage of the Uvalde massacre will continue in our next half hour at GMSA. We'll hear from people in that grieving community about what they are doing to heal. For the latest stories or to see any of our past stories regarding the shooting, the timeline, hearing from the victims, learning about the victims background. We have all that information. Just head to KSAT.com.
Well, new this morning, a man is recovering after he was struck by a vehicle. This happened around midnight on Gambler Road, not far from I-10 on the east side of town. Police say the man was riding a motorcycle when he was hit. He was taken to the hospital and is doing okay. There was a woman who was on that motorcycle with him. She was treated on scene. Officers are still looking for the driver who hit him. Time now, just about 6.09, 76 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, new questions being asked after the Department of Justice announced they will be investigating the law enforcement response on the day of Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. Those details ahead. And a motorcyclist now dealing with unimaginable injuries after a crash on the city's west side. We have the latest details from police. And also ahead, a nightmare at the airports this Memorial Day. We'll tell you what's being blamed for tons of flight cancellations. Let's take a quick live look out of the Alamo City. 76 degrees now. We know there's a lot of events going on, a lot of Memorial Day events going on in and around San Antonio. We're going to check in with Mike and Stephen for what you need to know. Good morning and welcome back. Other top stories we're following this morning. Five people dead after two boats crashed head on in the Georgia River over the weekend. One of those drivers now arrested for boating under the influence. Officials say two people were pronounced dead immediately following the crash on Saturday morning. Four passengers were injured and transported to a hospital while three others were declared missing. Georgia and U.S. Coast Guard drivers, divers, Re recovered the three victims' bodies on Sunday from the bottom of the Wilmington River near the coastal town of Savannah. So Saturday's crash near Savannah, it's the second involving a boat and serious injuries on the Wilmington River just this month. Well, search and rescue teams in Nepal have recovered the bodies of 16 people on board a flight that crashed with two, 22 people on it. All right, so Nepal's Civil Aviation Authority said on Twitter that the bodies have been collected. No one has been identified just yet. The wreckage of the plane that crashed into Nepal's mountains it has been found. And those bodies, like we said, they have been recovered. The plane's turboprop lost contact with the airport tower yesterday while flying through the area of mountaintops. The plane's destination is popular with foreign hikers who trek the mountain trails and with Indian and native pilgrims. All right, back here at home, just about 615, 76 degrees out. It is Memorial Day weekend. We know a lot of people out and about, Stephen. So what do the roads look like? Right now, things are looking pretty good. It's kind of been a copy and paste situation. The only difference is we're seeing a few more people out there right now. I-10 at Vance Jackson, we do expect, as Max just mentioned, uh, to get a little bit busier as the day does go on because people will be traveling for the Memorial Day holiday. But just remember to take it easy uh, right now. Although the roads are quiet, uh, you want to make sure you give yourself plenty of time, plenty of room to other drivers as well. You can see 410 in McCullough. It, things are just getting moving, but very gently right now. Let's go ahead and show you that wide look at the map because we've not detected any crashes as of yet, but we got to bring it in here to uh, here off of 35 in those northbound lanes. We told you about this a little bit earlier. That stalled vehicle. It's been there for a little while now. It's not been causing any issues, but just make sure if you have to head through that area on the east side that you move over, slow down and watch for those fl uh, flashing lights out there. So uh, also, as you mentioned, uh, we want to talk about some road work that's taking place. Traffic signal work uh, here off loop 1604 over on the north central side of San Antonio. Uh, this did start today. It's current and should be wrapping up on Friday. That's June 3rd. This will start around 9 in the morning and wrap at 3 in the afternoon. But keep in mind, crews do get out there a little bit earlier, so give yourself that time and plan ahead. That's when you can expect the eastbound to westbound turnaround closure. That will be there at Loop 1604 and Lock Hill Selma Road. So, of course, grab those phones, open your camera app, tap the middle of your screen, and hit that QR code. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page, and that has an updated list of the current closures that are taking place in your area and anything else that could be impacting your drive time. Just remember to scroll to the bottom of your screen. Max, I think I saw you do it right now. I did. Yes, yeah. I did. Good. It works. It's he's a, such I, a good participant. Well, I, I'm <laughs> always, like, what is he do? always he's doing the QR code. I'm always yeah. so enamored by the QR codes and, and how efficient they are. And you're right. I'll just put up the phone right here. Look, oh, you can see is. all the traffic information. You approved. definitely sat in the front of the class, took notes, <laughs> raised your hand yes. all the time. That's probably Max. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I would imagine you sat in the front of the class too, sir. I did. I, I did. So. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, 
lot sat next to each other. <laughs> it's a lot easier being able to use the camera on your phone instead of remember when they had those QR readers that you had to have this separate little app for that. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. That was always kind of a pain. So. That was. Yeah. Anyway. All right. If you are uh, getting ready to head on out this morning, it is definitely warm. It is definitely humid out there. Temperatures are well up in the mid and upper 70s throughout much of the area. Even Catula right now is at 80 degrees. Got a lot of humidity out there. That uh, number right there, dew point 69, which means, yeah, it is definitely humid. And the wind, boy, that's one of the big things. We've had windy conditions all night long out of the south, primarily about 15 miles per hour. But in some areas, it's actually about 20 and close to 25 miles per hour for sustained winds. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here right now. We've seen a few breaks this morning, but pretty much we're going to be staying cloudy throughout the rest of the morning. And then we'll see a lot more sunshine. And that is just a beautiful, beautiful picture out there. Thank you very much for that one. We're going to see great sunsets the next couple of evenings, not necessarily sunrises, just because again of all the uh, the clouds. So we've got again on average mid upper 70s. We are right now seven degrees above the normal low temperature, which is 70 right now. And again, all that humidity out there. Wind well, 22 miles per hour at Rock Springs and 20 at Corpus Christi. Then the gusts on top of that. 31 at Rock Springs, 24 at Del Rio, and 23 out there at the airport. We've had gustier conditions in the overnight hours. Sarah was talking about how it kind of woke her up. My garbage cans were knocked over this morning because of the, uh, the windy conditions that we had, and it's going to stay pretty breezy throughout the rest of today. So temperatures, we will maybe fluctuate a couple of degrees in the next few hours. Plenty of clouds, and then we'll see more sunshine as the morning rolls on. We'll make it up into the 80s by the mid to late morning hours, 90 already at noon. Again, windy conditions throughout the rest of today, and then we'll make it up through the mid 90s and top off at 97 later on this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine, and the record high temperature is 98. So we're going to be obviously just the hair's width away from that today. Temperatures over the next few days, lows are going to be staying in the mid 70s. Three, four degrees above normal, thanks to all the humidity and a lot of those morning low clouds and high temperatures, despite the fact they do come down slightly, are still going to be well above normal. The average high temperature right now is 90, and then we go back up, it looks like, in toward the weekend. As far as any rain chances, perhaps by the middle of the week, a stray shower or two, but wouldn't get really excited about that. 90 partly cloudy skies today at noon. High temperature again up to 97 within a degree of the record and windy conditions. And like I said, it's going to be staying very hot and all these numbers are pretty much four degrees, three, four degrees above their respective normals all the way through the week. Slightly lower temperatures midweek and Wednesday. If there is a shower that pops up great, I wouldn't count on it though. And it just stays very hot and gets a uh, pretty much hotter as we go on in toward the upcoming weekend, staying in the upper 90s. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. Topping your morning consumer headlines, flight cancellations backing up travel plans this holiday weekend from Friday through Sunday. Well over 5,000 wow. flights canceled, according to FlightAware. Many of the cancellations are being blamed on bad weather and what airlines are calling, quote, air traffic control actions. We're going to have a closer look on this story ahead on GMSA. And stock markets in the United States closed for Memorial Day, but stock markets around the world, they've actually been ticking up a little higher after last week's numbers. Could have indicated, we don't want to say it just yet, but they could have indicated that inflation in the United States is slowing down. Okay, so we're going with that? <laughs> it is, it, one indicator says inflation numbers could be going down, but... Gas prices are still at record highs. I was saying gas prices yesterday were ridiculous. Yeah, time now, 621, 76 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, the NBA Finals Max. Matchup is now set. After the break, we'll have a recap of Game 7 between the Heat and the Celtics. I've got moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now, there's Sky Rizzy. Things are getting clearer. I feel free to bear my skin. Yeah, that's all me. Nothing at me. Go hand in hand. Nothing on my skin. That's my new plan. Nothing is everything. Achieve clear skin with Sky Rizzy. Three out of four people achieve 90% clear skin in four months. Of those, nearly nine out of ten sustained it through one year. And Sky Rizzy is four doses a year after two starter doses. I see nothing in a different way. It's my moment, so I just gotta say, nothing is everything. 
Introducing may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Nothing is everything. Talk to your dermatologist about Sky Rizzi. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. In this morning's GMA First Look, millions of people taking to the skies this Memorial Day weekend. Air travel at pre-pandemic levels, but this unofficial preview to summer travel saw some flight delays and cancellations and frustrated passengers. I'm here until I can see what's going on. I came here for my grandbaby's graduation. And I didn't expect to get stuck whatsoever. Hundreds of flights canceled over the holiday weekend with people desperate to get away. Just kind of have an adventure after being uh, home for quite some time with the pandemic and all the restrictions. Delta Airlines, which saw the most cancellations, blaming bad weather and air traffic control actions. So what should you do if your flight gets canceled today? We'll give you the expert tips coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News. New York. Well, the Eastern Conference Finals are wrapping up in the NBA last night. The Heat Celtics going to Game 7. All right, Boston starting off strong on the road. You see Jimmy Butler here. You see Jadim, Jason Tatum there. Two of the highest scorers of the game. So, oof, the Celtics outscoring Miami 32-17 in the first quarter. But this one really go down to the wire in the end the celtics winning the decisive game seven by just two baskets the final from miami celtics will represent the east in the finals beating the heat 100 to 96. so like i said the finals are set boston celtics representing the eastern conference the golden state warriors rep in the west celtics warriors game one tipping off this thursday evening 8 p.m at Golden State at San Francisco. You can watch all the finals games right here on KSAT 12. There you go, it's pretty cool. Are you, uh, any rooting interest? I mean, the Spurs aren't in it, so I, I'm not even. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Time now, 626, 76 degrees out. Okay, and next, up next in our next half hour of GMSA, if you have filled up your gas tank recently, then you know that pain, <laughs> that the prices are still at a record high. We'll tell you when you could start to see those prices come down, hopefully. And our coverage of the elementary school in Uvalde, Rob Elementary, the shooting there, we're going to continue to hear from the people in the community as they try to come together, try to heal in the aftermath. I have to send her and know that you don't know what's going to happen. And I know it's scary for the parents. It's hard for them. And nobody knows, we don't know what they're going through. And to see those little faces on those crosses, it's, it's not right. This should not have been something that happened. Those kids had a whole life ahead of them. From this to walking into a school thinking you're okay one second and then the next second, you're screaming for help and you don't know what's going to happen next. Does, how do you think this community will heal from this? We'll heal. Well, if we want them to heal, we need some new rules on here. If we want, if, if, we, want, if we want to heal, we need some new rules. Because if we don't change nothing, it's going to be the same and it's going to happen again and again. We need some new rules. Some people shouldn't have guns or um, weapons, you know. Some people that have the wrong mentality shouldn't have some. Well, as the community in Uvalde continues to mourn, a new investigation is underway about the events of law enforcement response to the mass shooting. Good morning. It is 631 this Monday morning. It is May 30th. It is Memorial Day. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. And a lot of people might be going out to the Fort Sam National Cemetery today to pay mm -hmm. the respects for the people who died defending our country, Mike. And you said it's going to be hot. It's going to be windy. Yeah, it's very windy right now. And we've had pretty good wind gusts overnight. And this is pretty much what you're going to be seeing throughout the rest of the morning. A couple of holes in the clouds here and there. And then we'll see a lot more sunshine later on today. But I guess if you are heading on out there this morning, 
cloud cover is kind of a good thing, blocking that sun as much as possible, but we will start to see more sunshine as the uh, morning rolls on later on in the morning. 77 right now and dew points at 69. A bunch of humidity out there and the winds right now, sustained winds are 16 miles per hour out of the south primarily, but we've had and still have wind gusts uh, 2025 and we've had wind gusts good approaching 35 miles per hour earlier this morning. So heat index right now, it's not that much above the actual air temperature, but add a couple of degrees to it. 80 is what it feels like at Stinson, 82 Pleasanton, 79 at the airport. Same thing at Port SA and New Braunfels. We do have moderate mold, grass, pine, pigweed are all on the low side. So cloudy, warm and humid this morning, and then we're going to have mostly sunny skies later on today. Upper 90s, the record going for 97 for a high temperature today. The record is 90 eight degrees going to be really close to that the rest of the week and not quite as warm and I'm only talking about just a couple of degrees but we'll take 96 over 98 or 97 so shave off in a couple of notches throughout the rest of the week still very very humid though in the morning with a lot of clouds in the morning and then by the weekend it's going to be blazing again getting back toward the upper 90s is there any rain to be squeezed out anywhere we'll take a look ahead coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Steve Cavazos on a holiday like this I would assume not many cars out there. Not really, Mike. You know, you can see there 281 at Grayson. Yeah, not a whole lot of people out there as we get that drive around town. US 90 at Couples. Usually this spot there is pretty busy, but you can see right now as people are maybe trying to make their way in from Castroville on 90, they're really not going to encounter any major slowdowns. Those roads are almost empty. Check out 1604 at Marbach, but uh, we do have an issue that we need to look a little bit more into. So as you take you here to the map over here, I 10 eastbound at loop 1604, Texas reported this crash just mid minutes ago uh, near Six Flags. We're not seeing it on the trans guide cameras just yet, but uh, I'll give our friends over there a call. Find out exactly how this is going to impact the drive time and what you can expect in terms of uh, those lanes of traffic and what if you have to travel through there. But other than that, let's get that bird's eye view. Uh, well, actually, let's jump over here really quick. 35 northbound at Splashtown. We still have that stall out there as well. Uh, just make sure you check your vehicles. Now let's go ahead and get that bird's eye view of the metro area. You can see no other problems are being detected here in town, but I just know up to my right, up to my right over here. The new brothels. There is a crash off of 35. We'll look into that as well. Find out if those trans guide cameras can pick that up. But right now things are looking OK as we get a look at those travel times as well. But the usual slowdown if you're heading in from 281 southbound coming in from Bulverde due to some of those ro that were road work. Pardon me. 410 at Broadway. One last look around town. Things are fine, but we'll get an update on those issues and give you those right here on GMSA. Max Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. The pain of the Uvalde school massacre is still surging through the community there. We've had crews there over the last several days covering the aftermath of that horrible tragedy. Now, the United States Department of Justice reviewing the Uvalde law enforcement response to the shooting, all at the request of the Uvalde mayor. This, as victims' families, the community, and people across the country are trying to make sense of what exactly happened. So take a look. In a statement put out by the mayor, he said in part, quote, I thank the U.S. Department of Justice for accepting my request to conduct an independent critical incident review of law enforcement's response to the mass shooting. I trust the assessment will be fair, transparent, and independent, end quote. And right now, there are lots of questions about how the review will be conducted. ABC's Marcus Moore takes a closer look. President Biden confronted with a community's mounting frustration in Uvalde, Texas. President responding, we will. And tonight, ABC News obtaining new video showing police breaking windows at the school. They're getting the kids out. Officers trying to rescue students from the building. And for the first time, we hear what appears to be dispatch audio sharing with officers that 911 operators are on the phone with students trapped inside those classrooms. Texas law enforcement detailing those chilling calls from children. She identified herself and whispered she's in room 112. At 1210, she called back in room 12, advised there are multiple dead. Again at 1216, she's called back and said there's eight to nine students alive. 
Tonight, the Justice Department announcing it will conduct a review of the law enforcement response to the shooting, vowing it will be fair, transparent, and independent. Sources telling ABC News that a Customs and Border Protection tactical team defied local authorities, led by Police Chief Pete Arredondo. He was convinced at the time that the, there was no more threat to the children and that the subject was barricaded and that they had time to organize with the proper equipment to go in. That federal tactical team going in at 12.50 p.m., fatally shooting the suspect 77 minutes after the terror began. The gunman found with more than a dozen bullet wounds. That was Marcus Moore reporting. Now, it is so emotional. We heard from so many families in and around Uvalde, families from across the country visiting, showing them respects. And then yesterday, President Joe Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden making their appearance. Yeah, their first stop was to Robb Elementary as soon as they landed on Marine One and they kind of just took a moment of silence, laying white roses there at that now growing memorial. Then they attended mass at Sacred Heart Church. And what was so special about this day is it was really all a focused on the families, the victims' families. You know, President Biden didn't make a public statement, didn't talk to the media, meeting privately for over four hours with those families, and then also meeting privately with the first responders who responded to Robb Elementary on Tuesday. And I'm really glad you brought that up because it, it is so important to acknowledge that yesterday it was not about the president, it was yeah. about these families, it was about this community that is now working to come together to heal in the aftermath of, of what should have been an unimaginable situation, a parent's nightmare, and now this community has to figure out what comes next. And it, it was so uh, amazing to hear all of these families from across the country come out and show their respects. And we had team coverage of this. We had Steve Spreester out at the town square, which has become the kind of main memorial there. Uh, Cause to get to the memorial at Robb Elementary, mm -hmm. you have to go through DPS troopers. It is right. blocked. Um, so that Times Square or that market, that square there has just become a central part where people are leaving flowers. And there was also a choir, the Light of the World Church Choir that just came after their Sunday service and they sang there and it was beautiful. And it was really beautiful hearing from the children of Uvalde having their messages. There's the choir. Let's take a listen. emotional interviews that we've been going over throughout the morning right now, just head to ksat.com. Now to a phrase we've been hearing a lot over the last several days, Uvalde strong. Alicia Barretta spoke to so many people in that community yesterday. She takes a look at what they are now doing to heal. Good morning. Well, we spoke to a lot of people who live here, but also those who have traveled hundreds, if not thousands of miles. And they say that this town square has always been the heart of Uvalde. So it just made sense to have the memorial here. 21 wooden crosses lead the way to a space of healing in Uvalde's town square. I had to be here just to show support and uh, maybe start my own healing. This is what Uvalde Strong looks like. Messages by children their own words, their own writing. We're here for everybody, and that's how I was raised. I just know that it would hurt me the most to lose my sister in a situation like this. Um, so I stay close with God and I stay close with my family. Each person present connecting to the victims in some way, hoping to be a pillar of support for the families of the lives lost and the children of Robb Elementary. Now families are numb. But I think in time, they'll see all the support that they had when this happened and even afterwards. I've told kids before that there's this giant hole in their heart and uh, it'll never close, but it will get smaller in time. And that takes talking about it, crying about it, having those tears. But it's the gathering and community and those acts of kindness that we've witnessed throughout these last few days that the people here in Uvalde believe will help mend that broken heart. Reporting in Uvalde for GMSA, Alicia Barrera. Thank you, Alicia. Well, you may be wondering how you can help out. In addition to giving blood, you can also 
donate monetarily. There's official funds set up to help the families of the school shooting victims. We have those official funds listed right now on ksat.com. Just click on the article. Switching gear to some of our overnight stories. New this morning, a motorcyclist is in the hospital with serious injuries after a crash on the city's west side. This happened just before 3 this morning near Horal and East Valley Street, not far from Loop 410 and Highway 90. Police say a woman driving a car rear-ended the man on the motorcycle. That man's foot ended up getting pinned under the motorcycle, and it might need to be amputated. It's still unclear if the woman is going to be facing any charges. Time now, 642, 76 degrees out. Well, coming up next on GMSA, when experts say we might start to see those high gas prices finally start to come down. Welcome back. AAA says nearly 35 million Americans hit the road for Memorial Day holiday, and it's costing them a pretty penny to get back and forth. So experts say gas prices this weekend actually hitting a 10 year high. And as John Lawrence reports, it still could be a little bit of time before we see a break. I haven't seen these type of prices in all my life. The temperature won't be the only thing going up this summer. As we progress beyond Memorial Day, I now peg our odds at $5 a gallon gasoline nationwide at 60%. So that could be coming. As of Monday, the national average for a gallon of gas was $4.60, according to GasBuddy.com, just as Americans head into the summer driving season. You know, I won't do quick trips down to Florida to see family and stuff in the car. Um, and I'll probably limit some of my plane travel. Um, just until everything drops back down. The cost of gas surged about 30% since Russia attacked Ukraine in late February, and the U.S. is feeling the pinch. Energy costs are, are way too high. The president's taken some steps to ease that by the release of our reserves. Uh, we recognize the international circumstances of war in Ukraine, and the energy prices are not determined here in the United States, but we need to do more about it. Gas Buddy says demand usually starts to fall in August, which could help the cost of gas to drop. However, severe weather in the Atlantic could play spoiler. The above average hurricane forecast, uh, that is a high risk that we could see prices remaining elevated basically through Labor Day. I'm John Lawrence reporting. You know, I was at the gas station yesterday for snacks and forgot to fill up. So it, it happens, but uh, dreading <laughs> forgot that little, or didn't want to <laughs> both. But I'm dreading that a little bit later today. Uh, thankfully, if you are heading out the door, you don't have to dread traffic right now because take a look around town. 410 at McCullough, super quiet shot there. 410 at Ray Ellison. You can see the same thing. It has been more or less a copy paste kind of situation when we see these shots at trans guy. The only difference now is that it's getting a little bit brighter outside. So uh, I got to show you the map here because we do have a stall that's still detected and reported by TechSot off of I-35 northbound at Splashtown. Watch out there and as we show you that bird's eye view of the map and give you a view of the metro area, we talked about some crashes off of I-10 at 1604 and up toward New Braunfels. Talked to our friends over at Transguide. We combed through some of the cameras. Doesn't look like there's any flashing lights out there, so some great news for those drivers that have to head through those lanes of traffic. Uh, but as you see, some active construction spots. I-35 northeast on the uh, northeast side of San Antonio. There will be some pothole work taking place that starts tomorrow, though, and should be wrapping up on Friday, June 3rd. So drivers keep this in mind. Nine in the evening to five in the morning. During that time, that's when you can expect that right shoulder closure on I-35 northbound there at Sandpiper Drive to Shin Oak Drive. So again, plan your commute. We're going to be watching the roads closely throughout the morning. Just remember to do the same. But for the latest on the forecast, let's check in with Mike Gozer Hage. Well, if you are heading out to uh, Fort Sam this morning, uh, for the first time in about three years, they're actually going to have a ceremony out there. And uh, I know in years past, this was about uh, seven, eight years ago, my boys and I, when they were in Scouts, always had the honor and privilege of putting American flags at some of the uh, headstones out there. It was always a beautiful sight to see out there. So if you are heading on out to, uh, and thank you for that privilege, by the way, all the, uh, the scouts from around town used to always uh, do that. But uh, if you are heading on out there this morning, very warm, very humid. And then later on this afternoon, we will see more sunshine and 97 high temperature. The record is 98 and we are going to be obviously very close to that. There's all the clouds and hopefully if you are 
heading out to Port Sam this morning. Those kind of hang on in there so the sun doesn't come out to really start to heat things up yet. Also, it is very breezy. We've got winds out of the south primarily about 16 miles per hour, 18 Pleasanton, 22. These are the sustained winds and then the gusts on top of that. 32 right now at Rock Springs, 24 out there at the uh, air, excuse me, at Pleasanton and it stays windy all day long. Temperatures are going to start to work their way into the upper 70s and get up to 80 already at 9 o'clock. We'll start to see some sunshine. We've already seen just a couple of holes in the clouds this morning. More sunshine, 90 at noon, and then we work our way up through the 90s all afternoon with plenty of sunshine. Again, breezy, 97 high temperature later on today. Now, as far as cloud cover, clouds this morning, more sunshine in the afternoon. We do the same thing tomorrow. Humidity will drop down somewhat this afternoon, so heat index readings aren't going to be just off the charts later on. You'll have a little bit of a, a heat index. We'll have the humidity come back in tomorrow morning then drop down in the afternoon. Then we go into Wednesday and there is this particular computer model does have a very small chance for a stray shower or two on Wednesday. I wouldn't get really excited about that, but just that I mean, if we do get a stray shower, it would not be really of any consequence. A little free lawn watering, but uh, that'd be about it. But again, I'm not really encouraged by that much at all. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature makes it all the way up to 97. Again, the record's 98, and we are going to have blustery winds, 15, 20 miles per hour out of the south, and it's going to be then gusting on top of that. Morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, temperatures will drop off just a couple of degrees. We'll take anything we can get by the mid to latter portion of the week, but heat comes back in here then by the weekend. Sarah, Max. Mike Ostrich, thank you so much. Well, coming up later this morning on GMSA at 9, we'll be live at Fort Sam Houston National C Cemetery for their Memorial Day ceremony that Mike was just talking about. Right, and as we've been mentioning, this is the first public ceremony since 2019. The VA very excited to have guests attend the ceremony in person once Tiff again. Tiffany Huertas will be out there live starting at 9 a.m. We'll share some of that ceremony with you also when it begins at 9.30. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City right now. 76 degrees now. We're going to check in with Stephen and Mike one more time in just a bit. Good morning, everyone. Let's get one last look at the roadways. If you have to head out the door in the next few moments, you're going to have those roads to yourself. Just take a gander right now around Strands Guide 1604 at Military. Not a lot to talk about this morning. It has been a pretty quiet start to this week, so just remember to take it easy. And as just a reminder, we still have this stall off 35 northbound near Splashtown. Travel times are just about green across the board, but a little bit of a slowdown coming in from Boulevard, Mike. We do have a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. It is also humid and breezy. The heat index is 80 right now, and wind is out of the south 14 uh, 15 miles per hour and then we've got some gusts on top of that it's going to stay breezy all day long we are going to make it up to 97 for high temperature later on today southerly wind 15 20 miles per hour and gusting on top of that lots of sunscreen shade and water Thank you, Mike. And coming up at GMSA at 9, we're going to be live from Fort Sam National Cemetery for the Memorial Day ceremony. All right, we'll see you back here at 9 a.m.